Hello again, everybody. Uh, hello again, everybody. Welcome to another Communications with Brian Sowers. I'm super excited today to have my friend and colleague, Brian Burchick. He is the key man doing so many great things in the city of Lilburn. But Brian, first of all, let me welcome you to the show. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you. How are you, Ryan? I'm I'm doing well. Doing well. Got us in gallery view. So, you know, it's, well, you take each victory as you get them. Uh, but uh, no, and, and I was going to try your title, Brian, but I'm going to butcher that. So I'm going to let you give me your official title. Yeah. Well, when you call me the key man, that's not really true. OK, OK. Um, but, you know, I am uh, it is sort of a mouthful, but I'm the community development administrator and public information officer for the city of Lilburn. Well, I'll tell you, you're a key man to me, because if you have that many things in your title, it'd be like, I'm going to call him because he should know an answer. to something. <laughs> um, No, but thanks for joining us here. Uh, tell us a little bit, Brian, just with your own ties, your 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 ties to the community, a um, little bit about yourself, family background, whatever, just so our audience can get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Well, I, I grew up in Lilburn, so I went to uh you know, went to elementary, middle, and high school all on Coal Road uh, back when it was Camp Creek, Trickham, and uh, Parkview High School. Uh, Trickham's moved since then, but um, yeah, so I, I grew up, graduated from Parkview in uh, 2003, which was kind of the peak of the glory days of uh, football state championships. Yeah. They, uh, they didn't lose a game, I think, my sophomore through senior year, but um, so that was a lot of fun, and went off to UGA, um, married my wife, Erin, shortly after college, and uh, we're, we're living in Lawrenceville and we're really wanting to live in sort of a walkable neighborhood. We'd go into Atlanta and look at all these, you know, Candler Park and Oakhurst and Kirkwood and all these neighborhoods that we could not afford. Um, and yet we just really were drawn to that idea of, man, we'd love to be in a walkable kind of small town, downtown area. And, uh, you know, being from Lilburn, of course, uh, knew of the old town Lilburn area and just saw so much potential and um over time realized what if we what if we went all in on this and uh and so back in 2014 our family moved to old town lilburn kind of brought some friends with us there was actually a, a wave of young families <laughs> that were all kind of friends that all moved together and um so i i served on the city council uh, when i when we moved here i really wanted to get involved and so kind of started with the planning commission uh, and then ran for city council and got on the city council. And then kind of after three years of that, uh, realized, you know, this has been amazing. Um, but I actually, the more I was learning about sort of the staff side of development work and specifically downtown development, I was just so passionate and drawn to that. And uh, so we, I, I ended up resigning city council and beginning to work part time for our downtown development authority in our city doing uh, downtown work in Old Town. And uh, that has evolved into a full time role of what I'm doing today. So, well, you know, it, it's uh, funny you say that because uh, we, we have s several mutual friends. And when with one of the things I do that you're familiar with, uh, one of our local magazines, they were talking about some neighbors living there. And I'm like, where is it exactly? And then so I changed to make sure we were hitting that. So it sounds like I mean, the growth is amazing. And, you know, that's that's kind of what's uh, as you I'm sure you share with people. I mean, the, the people moving to this area um and different you know mail routes and neighborhoods that have grown up you know lots changed i mean so you you were back there in the uh, the you're a young man still to me but uh you remember those days of the part view and um i don't know it seems like every parcel of land is being built on as we we drive around yeah yeah i mean there's obviously tons of development kind of happening everywhere it seems but um certainly here in lilburn um it's there's all kinds of housing studies that show that the demand is much greater than the inventory of um, residential options. And so it is very, very much in demand. Um, Lilburn specifically, really, um, there's a, a neighborhood site that's being prepped um, right now, which really kind of represented the last large uh, property that could be developed uh, into sort of a larger neighborhood. So we're pretty much filled up. I mean, of course, there will be redevelopment and there will be different parcels uh, throughout, but in terms of large opportunities, they're not really there. Um, Lilburn has kind of been filled up and, you know, we've always had such a, a, a base of established neighborhoods uh, that continue to be amazing. And then, you know, seeing these new neighborhoods added, it's, uh, it's still, you know, we've got a great, great amount of neighborhoods for families to live in. Yeah. And I mean, uh, 
with your role, I mean, you, do you work with a lot of the businesses that are trying to, you know, get into the city, you know, uh, what do I say, Old Town or whatever? Um, is that part of what you do? Sure. Yeah. Um, really trying to create a, a community within the business community of Old Town um, and collaboration uh, amongst those business owners uh, has been a part of my role. Um, we, you know, are, are meeting now monthly um, to try to really work smarter together on how do we, um, you know, wh where the city is doing events, how can those businesses work together to maximize that time where people are coming into Old Town or how can we uh, get those businesses together and collaborate for events where everybody wins and, um, you know, people are visiting the various spots. So we are uh, definitely um, feel like we want to grow the partnership together between our staff and the, the Old Town business owners. Yeah, I mean, it's just good to see. I mean, people need to see the, the good news is that, you know, we, we're still in a pandemic and, you know, businesses obviously, you know, around the, the world or country have, have closed, but there's also businesses starting and uh, neighborhoods being built. And I know you get to see some of that. So part of this show, when I originally began it back almost a year ago, right at the beginning of the pandemic, was sharing some of that positive news with people saying, you know, it's not all they're closing. There's things that are, people are starting and I don't care where you live. That's good news, right? Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. Such a, such a crazy unique time. And, you know, obviously certain, certain businesses, certain industries are, are being impacted uh, more negatively than others. Um, lots of businesses are pivoting and, and thinking about ways to, to do business differently in light of all that's happening. Um, you know, we've seen certainly some of that with our old town businesses and um, yeah, it's, you know, we, we, we don't stop with our vision, you know, from a sort of the government um, perspective. I mean, obviously we are still planning very boldly for the future and wanting to continue to make efforts today that can take us closer to that. Uh, and certainly one aspect of that vision is uh, continuing to really see a vibrant downtown district um, continue to grow and flourish. And so we are, uh, we're still, you know, kind of doing all the things that we can do um, that are still doable uh, in light of all this. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's just anytime anybody that I know personally gets wind of anything new or opening or whatever, there's a, there's a lot of excitement. Um, and, you know, you and the, like I said, you know, I'm, you're the point person. So when the city of Lilburn hears this, you know, uh, I was, I wanted to interview you, but I know it's such a great team, you know, such a great people and team. Um, and, and it's, and it's so awesome to see because, uh, you know, I actually, I told you, I, I mess. So my headquarters of doing all this stuff, that's where I live in Lilburn, but I told you, you know, I'm excited to see because this is only a few miles from where I live in a great neighborhood but we're not within the city. So it's, uh, it's exciting for, for even people that it hits, it hits home for me, um, as well. So, uh, well, tell, just tell us, um, you know, Brian, what, um, uh, what have you, you know, we talk about the community, what are some of the great things you've seen just in your life during this last 10, 11 months during the pandemic that are positive? I mean, everybody's talked about, you know, go away 2020, never want to talk about it, but anything you can say, Hey man, this was actually a, a blessing that came out of this, or here's some good things that I saw with people coming out of this. Anything you want to share with our audience personally or whatever? Yeah. Well, personally, and I mean, I just, of course, recognize the incredible amount of privilege that I have to even be able to say this, but uh, you know, this, this past year, 2020 was a year where, where I was able to come on full time with the city of Lilburn, which for me was a, a huge blessing, huge kind of uh, career transition for me. Cause um, you know, my background was not in government or public administration. And so anytime you're sort of breaking into a new industry, you, you really got to hustle and you got to, um, do everything that you can to kind of show that, you know, um, you can do this work. And so um, I was uh, just so excited and honored when the opportunity came to move from sort of a part-time consulting role into a full-time position. So that happened in August, um, which was a, a huge blessing. Um, in terms of um, our family, I mean, obviously we've had a lot of time at home together. Um, We've got four kids, and so it's uh, never a dull moment. Every day is a party, it feels, uh, at my house. Um, but, you know, there's 
there's certainly been positives that have come out of the year. Um, I think there's collectively just been a real resilience in, in the community and in Lilburn specifically. Um, I know I've, I've just seen the way, uh, whether it's the, the government staff and city council or the business owners or, you know, whoever, there's certainly been a real um, determination. Like we, we've got to, we've got to keep going. We've got to figure this out and do what it takes. And I mean, I was talking with our HR uh, staff uh, leader here in the city and, you know, she's been in HR for 40 years. She said, I've never dealt with anything like this, you know, and she's on the tail end of her career, you know, kind of moving towards retirement pretty soon. And, and she's, dealing with something she's never <laughs> challenged, she's never dealt with. So uh, I'm proud of the way uh, that everybody has responded. I am too. I mean, you, you guys have done a phenomenal job. And that's what I wanted to have you on the show is, you know, at least speaking for not only what you're doing, but the, the great team uh, is doing. And, you know, we had the opportunity to have lunch, you know, back then and, you know, it, it, whatever now, it seems like a month ago, but six months ago, whenever, whenever we got when to talk again, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, I just that's what people need to see. You know, I, I started the show with the context is we, we are going to get to the other side. Uh, we are going to humans need humans. I think you and I talked about that at lunch. We didn't even we always yeah. knew it. But how much do we just miss miss the things we a ball game or, or you know, or get together for a concert in the park? You know, we miss that. I think people are going to come out in droves. Oh, sure. I mean, when it's when it's safe and when we're ready, I mean, we have absolutely believe that. And, you know, it seems as if increasingly people are looking for experiences. You know, I think we're um, younger generations, but really all generations are becoming increasingly um, attracted to experiences that are unique, that are beyond maybe what the standard has been in the past, you know, where you really want to do something that feels like it's got meaning or it's got a story to it or, um, things really becoming hyper local, right? So it's not just about going to a restaurant, but it's about supporting this local spot that you love that has the local drink that you love. And, you know, exactly. everything's moving um, into that kind of hyper local experience, which, of course, working for a city with a focus on downtown development, that's, I love that stuff because that's what we can think through with our, our business owners as well as the events that our city puts on. Um, and so, yeah, we're, uh, of course, just, highly anticipating the time when we can get back to doing the full calendar of events that we've done in the past and, and, and beyond that. Um, of course, we got to see how things play out this first half of this year. Um, and we've, you know, we've had events that have continued on over the last year that were smaller scaled, that were outdoors and able to be socially distanced. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's those things as well. So, you know, and, and I, I get to, in one of my careers, uh, I get to work with a lot of cities, uh, you know, particularly in Gwinnett County, and, you know, everybody is, you know, approaching in a different way, but I mean, very eager, I mean, just like Lilburn, dude, to get back to getting people together again, you know, safely, but um, also, I know everybody's got, you know, you, you got to be planning, I mean, you can't just sit and wait for, you know, you got to hope for the best and p plan, and, you know, if the plans don't go accordingly, you know, you, you, punt and figure it out right sure yeah absolutely um i know we've leaned into last year when we were not able to do so many of our larger scale events uh whether it was fourth of july or the rock the park concerts you know the this the larger scale where thousands of people will come into the city park in old town um we we had to pivot and say okay well we're not doing these large events and so let's lean into more intentional marketing and more intentional um efforts to to share who we are uh whether it's in physical publications even like yours or if it's digital if it's our presence online and so uh we've done some things uh, we've been able to you know do some different things that we wouldn't have been able to do if those events had taken place so I mean, I think you've, you've just got to be looking for how do we, given the circumstances, how do we still maximize what we have? How can we still uh, creatively, you know, do things that are going to move the ball forward? And, you know, I think a lot of, um, what's the word? I, I mean, I, I think when you're, when you're in tough spots, like a lot of creative uh, kind of ingenuity can, can come forth. And um, that's a, that can be a real positive thing. 
Yeah, I appreciate you saying that because, um, you know, I was, I've always said speaking, you know, behind every opportunity, excuse me, behind every obstacle lies an opportunity, you know, and behind every problem lies a solution. And it, it's not, I've always said, it's not just, you know, uh, think outside the box. It was always break the box and look at things in new ways. And I, I know you guys have done it, uh, but we've been forced to do it. Um, you know, so I had some more traditional media, but have, have, have been able to expand, you know, into a million digital media markets and social media markets that I had on the, docket as I shared, but you know, it was on my to-do list. And so, so, so Brian and sharing with the people, you know, we got business owners, we've got, you know, people live in communities, we've got people from all over, you know, North America, over the globe that, that'll listen to this as a show or a podcast, but you know, everybody has different emotions they're feeling because we, I mean, we, you can't go through that, this 12 month period. And, and it, it's like you said earlier about the HR uh, individual, it's just there's nothing to compare this to, and everybody feels it differently. How might you share some encouraging words just from what you've seen with businesses do or your staff do that, you know, you've seen the best in humanity and that, you know, encourage that person listening today is going, well, he might be upbeat, but I'm sure not. You know, give put a smile on their face. Sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're, we're all in it together, um, and everybody's got different circumstances and I know for some this has been far more challenging than for others and um, there's all those different factors um, but I you know I think there's moments like I had a moment uh, a few nights ago actually I was way, way it was way too late to be going and getting my trash off the, the street my, my garbage can after pickup but sometimes that happens and it's so it's probably nine o'clock and was like oh, I need to go get the trash in the recycling bin and this, the sky was just really clear. And I was um, looking up at the stars and, you know, I was going to give a presentation at the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce the next morning, which, you know, I'm new in this role and a little intimidated to, to go and do that. And, you know, you can't like look up at the sky and, and really see the grandness of the, the world and the universe that we live in and seeing those stars. And you can't do that and feel like you're just so important. You know, it's very humbling. You're like, all right, I am just like one little individual out of billions. Um, so I'm not going to think that I'm so self-important. And yet also you do feel significant when you recognize I'm a part of something bigger. So yeah. it's like this transcendent, like I'm nothing, but I'm something. I, I, I am just so small and yet I do matter. I, I'm uniquely a part of something called the universe much bigger than myself and um and so if you can have some moments where you pause and you know different people connect to that in different ways but it was sort of a good reset for me and then i went in the next morning to that presentation i think with just a more accurate perspective like this is a great opportunity it's also not the biggest deal in the world I'm just gonna go do my best and it's all good you know Dude, that's awesome. I mean, I don't think I don't think you could have said that any better. And I appreciate you speaking from your heart. There's a lot of people need to hear that right now because it's exactly I, I've never thought of it that way. But we, you know, it's not like hey, we're insignificant because we're part of this big universe. Every person's super important, but but they're not overly important over anything else. And it's that it's that balance. And I think you uh, that's how I've always approached you know everything I do. You know, I've shared with you is that you know I don't take myself that seriously, and, and I also don't you know, put myself down in a point where like, I'm some bad, you know, I realize every day is a learning and growth opportunity to help somebody, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, you know, so I really appreciate you saying that because it's taking a moment, taking a deep breath. My watch will tell me when I need to take a deep breath, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I realized like, Hey, you know what? We only get a limited amount of time on this earth if we're lucky and, yeah. you know, living our lives the right way, making a difference in people's lives, uh, being part of something bigger than yourself is awesome yeah. and uh i know you've got a great team there but i mean it's super super i'm just super proud that you're in the role you were you're in and your humbleness and you're uh connecting people to to different things uh and what, what the city of Lebanon and old old town are, are doing brian it's just yeah. awesome, well thank you and, and i i have to say i something i say a lot about the team here at the city is that it's really um a bunch of humble leaders that don't really care who's going to get the credit. Um, I, th there's a quote, I think it was Harry Truman that said that, like, it's That's amazing right. what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit. And I see that in our staff and in our, with our mayor and council and with our downtown development authority, which are all these different entities that have to come together if we're going to actually 
you know, create the vibrant community that we hope to and, and continue to see it be vibrant. Um, you just simply can't do it without each other, um, probably more so than any other entity. You know, if it's a private business and the CEO really wants to get something done, he can kind of bulldoze and do it sometimes. It's not like that with government. It just simply can't bulldoze. You have, there, there's too much uh, consensus that has to be there. And so you really have to work together. And I think humility um, is the way to do it. That, that's the way to get the most done is to kind of try to not make it about your own egos, um, but to really make it about collectively what's going to be best for this community. Um, because we're ultimately, I mean, that's what government should be about is serving the public, uh, the taxpayers and those that are kind of within you, the boundaries of the, the area you're called to serve and to steward. And so, yeah, the, the staff uh, really from the top down with the mayor and council, as well as um, staff and, and others uh, really are humble leaders. And so I think that's why a lot is happening and I'm very, very excited about what's going to continue to happen uh, in the future in the city of Lilburn. Well, uh, I tell you, it's funny, as I shared, you know, I'm now to the final, uh, I think it's called the red zone of my doctorate in, in leadership, which you study all sectors. And one thing I came up with has nothing to do with any studies I've done is, you know, people, true leadership is when people do something because they want to, not because they have to. In other words, when you're putting your own interest aside and you say, this is, we work together, you know, they're, they're, it's like a Disney quote, you know, there's nothing we can't achieve. But if we all have, even, even like you go over to your point with private business, the CEO that, that does that all the time, eventually people jump ship and say, I'm done. I mean, yeah. you might get it done, but you're not getting it done with the best possible people on board. So the best way, which I've seen as we wrap this up is, you know, people putting their egos aside and their own individual uh, biases aside and saying, how can we make this work? And when that happens, you can see the beginnings of what's happening over there. And it's, it's awesome. And so kudos to everybody. Uh, I know you're the mouthpiece today, but certainly, you know, as they listen to know, uh, it's, a, it's a great team at work and great business partners and community at work um, that hopefully only get stronger. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Well, what is we wrap up, Brian, what's the best way people want to check what's going on in city of Lilburn or old town, or whatever, any websites or, or phone numbers or emails to connect with or Facebook or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the city website is city of Um, you know, if you've ever been to it or any city website, they're big, they have a <laughs> lot of functions that they have to serve. Um, we're actually also, um, building a current uh, website that's going to be old town Lilburn GA.com. Uh, which our downtown development authority is helping to fund and kind of guide through the process of that. But the, the goal with that was really to, um, you know, create a, a, a website that wasn't so big and bulky right. and to have a million things on it, like a city site has to, um, but rather something that your everyday person, your everyday, you know, Lilburn resident or, or somebody nearby who wants to check out uh, kind of what the restaurant scene is and what the different businesses are and what you can, you know, what you can do in Old Town Lilburn uh, could access it real easily. So um, that, that'll that become, we're building that right now. Uh, and then in terms of the city's social media stuff, everything, you know, Facebook, Instagram, um, we've got City of Lilburn and also um, we have a, a Lilburn City Park page to promote some of the stuff happening in the park, which is of course kind of a big anchor for us uh, in terms of our downtown area. So um, all that's there. And um, yeah, please, please reach out. Absolutely. Well, we'll do that. And one more time, I know it's not done yet. I know it's under construction, but it's old town, Lilburn, GA dot com. Yes. Okay. Yes. For the time being, okay, we, for the time we, being. Hope to have, okay. we hope to get that GA off the end. Eventually. Uh, no. Yeah. Still, still, <laughs> some marketing guy, I'll tell you, still not as long as some of them I see. I'm like, no, no one's ever going to type that in correctly, but, yes. but I'm sure uh, very Googleable as some, one of my guests told me it, uh, very, it'll become very Googleable. And uh, Brian uh, Burchick with the city of Lilburn and old town. Um, thanks for being a guest on the show today, man. I sure appreciate you coming on. Yes. Thanks for having me and a uh, happy new year. Happy New Year to you. All right, folks, we've had Brian Burchick uh, with City of Lilburn. City of Lilburn doing great things on the, coming on the Community Connections show. Stay tuned for upcoming shows. And, folks, we will see you next time.